Hey, welcome to Geek Speak, episode 25. Nice. What do you want to talk about, brother? Have you seen the uh, the Roadhouse we talked about? No, I haven't. Okay. I saw the trailer, but I haven't seen the movie. So, I watched it. Yeah? And, you know, everybody was like, look, Robert, just take it as what it is. Don't look at it and compare it to, you know. Something good? Well, something that you, <laughs> the original Roadhouse. So, I didn't. I and at first, like third of it, I yeah. came real close to being done. Oh, seriously? Yeah, it picked up, but just basically because it turned into a uh, testosterone field battle. Yeah. And and you know me being a guy, I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna watch these guys kick your asses. But it wasn't. I don't think they tried to keep it realistic. They kind of, kind of kept it campy. But yeah. I mean, when a guy gets stabbed four times or shot four or five times, and he's just like, and he keeps coming. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you think it reminds me of those old kung fu movies we watched when we were kids, where a guy gets stabbed <laughs> like thirty-seven times and he'd still keep fighting. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not in any shape. What's so form or is these guys here? But you slam me up against the wall the way these guys have been flung across, hit yeah. with a car, yeah. hit with a car, and fly down the road. I mean, I've been hit by a car and, and yeah, the tail, the tail, I'm a, but I'm a Conor McGregor fan, so I've been wanting to watch it for okay, that. But everybody so, talked about how he just walked around like a gorilla. <laughs> yeah, he, he was walking around like his knee would just stop and just automatically just turn yeah, like this. But they said like, he didn't even know they were filming. He just walks like that anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was something else. Yeah, so. If y'all enjoyed it, I'm happy for you. On a scale of one to ten, where do you get it? Uh, four. Four. I think I'll pass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Have you watched? Let's see. Any of the live action? First of all, did you watch the cartoon uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender? No. It was such a good cartoon. It's loved, world renowned. Yeah. And back several years ago, M Night Shyamalan tried to do a live action version. Mm -hmm. And I think he kind of ran off with the money and didn't actually <laughs> put it on film because it was horrible. Fans hated it, and I never have seen it. But uh, Netflix was going to do a live-action version. Right. They were going to do a series, not a movie. And so I saw the costumes, and I saw the characters, and it was spot on a cartoon. And I, and I really, really enjoyed the animated series. Okay. So I started watching it and started getting a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, uh, crap online. A lot of YouTube channels said it was boring, and and uh, but I actually enjoyed it. I thought for a live action adaptation, I thought they did a great job. I think what they realized is, I mean, you, it's really true to the cartoon, which I enjoyed. But now, was the cartoon based after a manga? No, it was an original. It was an original story, okay. and and and, uh, uh, and each little episode had a good moral. And I was enjoying it all the way up to episode six, and then it, I really started enjoying it, you know, because they spilt, spent that time building up characters and stuff. Right, right. And uh, But the thing is, is like, you can't compare, you know, I enjoy like the Chronicles of Narnia, those movies, right, and yeah. those books, but you can't compare them to Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. I mean, one has a more serious aspect, and, I, and, and if you read, if you read uh, uh, C.S. Lewis's Narnia series, or you, or you watch the movies in particular, they have like a Disney kid, kitty feel to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, it's geared toward children, and you have to realize that. So a lot of the adult themes that you have in some other fantasy shows, you're not going to have in Avatar: The Last Airbender. But I give it a, I probably give it a, a seven out of ten anyway. I mean, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm not all the way through it, and uh, um, but I thought. The, I mean, I've never seen a live-action version look so close to the cartoon. I mean, the only criticism I have of it is in real life, things get dirty right. and grimy, you know, and their costumes are really pristine, uh -huh. you know, and so it kind of it's a throwback to the old fantasy not, uh, movies we would watch back in the 70s where everybody's clothes was clean all the time. A lot of the sci-fi <laughs> was that way. But, yeah, it's good. If you haven't seen it, you'd enjoy it. Cool, man. So... What else you want to talk about? Have you seen the trailer for the new Beetlejuice movie that's coming out? Mm hmm Yeah. Actually got Michael Keaton back in it. Yeah. Michael Keaton, he did Batman. Right. He came back and did Batman. Came now he's doing Beetlejuice. Uh, I think they did really good uh, 
Gina Ortego, is that her name? Uh, I don't know. She's the girl who played in Wednesday in the in that yeah. television or yeah. Netflix series. I think it's cool they're getting her to play the daughter of what was the character's name? Julian or I think so. Julia or something like that. It's been a while since I seen. It. I only saw Beetlejuice once. Yeah, we're now the writers like fifty three, fifty four, yeah. something yeah. like that. And yeah, so oh, I her. seen that and I was like. Yeah, that's going to be. I hope they don't screw it up. Tim Burton's directing it, so well, it I like, be I'm a good. big Tim Burton fan anyway. Right. He, you know, everybody doesn't like his flavor of directing, but but uh, I do. I right. Do. Yeah. I, it's 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 different. I like it. Yep. I like it. Uh, let's see. So we recently got a new 3D printer, and the nice. other one, the old one bit the dust. <laughs> and uh, but you know we we recently started playing Dungeons and Dragons again. We hadn't played for years, and so being able to print your little 3D miniatures, you know, that's right. fun. That's fun, and and uh, uh, you can go to Thingiverse and find pretty much whatever you want, and it's free to download the file and then print it out. And and I've enjoyed painting those. You know, it's a real trick to paint a miniature. Right. And uh, uh, you know because they're so small. <laughs> But and my eyes are so old. Right. But uh, I've I've had real fun you with you one of those magnifying glasses. Yeah, yeah. So I actually uh, uh, have gotten into train building too. So so I'm the dungeon master. So really? for the for our next our next outing. Oh, terrain. Terrain. Yeah. I thought so, you meant like choo choo. No, no, not, no, no, no. Yes, I'm, so like, I'm introducing terrain. trains into my fantasy yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, uh, Thomas the engine. No, so, I mean, making, like, cave walls and making tiles and making right. little torches and stuff and, and and just crafting it really out of junk that you would throw away. Oh, you I know, could... cereal boxes and stuff like that. And so, so I've been enjoying it and having fun, and, and I like crafting anyway. So so I can't wait to our next we'll little... We'll have to get, get together, together and build some terrain because I got into building terrain for there for a while. Oh, you did? And I still have a bunch of my stuff that yeah. I use to make Well, the next, time you, next time you you DM, because we're going to trade off, right. next time you DM, you'll have to whip out some of your old terrain. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so what else you want to talk about? <clears throat> uh, Furio Rosa. Have you seen that trailer? Yes. Okay, yeah. so... I'm excited that for that. Not so much. Okay, so the the actress that's playing it is that's a prequel to. It's a Mad Max movie, but it's a prequel. Well, it's to, Mad Max saga, part yeah, of the yeah, saga. Yeah. It's really the first Max Mad has, Max movie without Mad Max. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of upsetting because I was always a Mad Max fan. But me too. Uh, how how do I say that woman's name? Charlize. Oh no no, it's that new. It's a new chick. The one that was in... Uh, yeah, Charlize uh, Hensworth. I, what's her name? Hens, or what was her Charlize name? Charlize Theron. Theron, dude. Yeah. She was... I liked her in yeah. that. Yeah. I think she did an awesome job. She so did. So to see her she replace... She was committed. Anna Taylor Joy. Yeah, she was in... Uh, but I understand because she's supposed to be a younger version yeah, yeah. of... And she's a good actress. And she is a good actress. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to poo-poo on her, but she's not Charlene. Yeah. And I, I like. But she I might like. be. She might be at some point. And Chris Hensworth does not look anything like. Yeah. His. Yeah. That's one of the last movies he did before he decided to go into, re like, I wouldn't say a retirement, but just take a little respite from acting. And I think it's cool that they're going to be bringing back the, uh, Mortal Joe. Is that the character's yeah, name? Yeah. 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 Of yeah. course. I don't know who's playing him. We'll go see it together when it comes. Yeah. Because yeah, the yeah. original Cause, actor passed away in two. 2020, I think yeah, it was. Because Teresa has no interest in seeing that whatsoever. Oh, really? Yeah, so we'll go see it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited to see not just that world go on, but to see those characters developed a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So have you seen Blue-Eyed Samurai? No, I've heard about it. So it's it's really it, it's really good series. It started out great and it ended good. So it started out great. First of all, the animation is so spectacular and the style they used i don't know if it's a mixture of 3d and 2d or it's just 2d done so well it looks like 3d mm -hmm. but like you could even see little motes of like dust flying in the air hmm. i mean it was in incredible animation and uh uh and i really enjoyed the series because i like japanese history anyway and without spoiling it it's about a period in japan where they ran out anybody who wasn't Japanese. You couldn't, 
if you were Japanese, you couldn't leave Japan. And if you wasn't Japanese, they didn't allow anybody to come to Japan. For almost like a hundred year period, they wanted to keep their society, they felt like it was being influenced by Western culture. So there were a lot of missionaries there and they ran them out. And so this child, this blue-eyed samurai, this child is of mixed heritage, half uh, European, half Japanese. And it's obvious by her blue eyes. And so when everybody's ran out, she's kind of considered a, an outcast, a demon, uh, uh, lower class. And so she wears some glasses trying to hide the fact that she's got blue eyes. But she trains in the sword, and it's so well written. And so I was just so on board for this, just eating up every episode. Okay. And then somewhere around episode four or six, I can't remember, they introduced like modern music into a fight scene. It was like a, a Metallica cover song. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and then they had like a 50s music in one of the fight scenes. And it, it kind of gave you that Quentin Tarantino feel, which I love Quentin Tarantino, but they're not Quentin Tarantino. They kept it real traditional up to that point. And so then they started getting into a little bit of the supernatural. Is it the same person directing each time? Yes, and so don't get me wrong. On a scale of one to 10, I give I still give it a, a seven, and uh, but it was a good solid nine up until that one episode, and I I didn't really I didn't really care for that. The way it ended was at a real big cliffhanger. I'm not a fan of that either. Go ahead and wrap your season up. You can have more seasons after that. Right. But go ahead and wrap it up, and then because you, you, especially on Netflix, you never know what's going to get renewed and what's not. It's been like that for years. Yeah, though. so just wrap up that season, and then if you get to make another one, you can, can still continue the story, but tie up that storyline. And they didn't; they left it as a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. So, so they shouldn't do that. They should never do that with any series. The, you, if you want to leave a cliffhanger from episode to episode, that's cool. But like from season to season, yeah, don't don't do that. Well, that's been a big thing. Like Teen Titans, they left that, they stopped that series yeah. on a cliffhanger. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, they stopped that on a cliffhanger. It's just that's just something they've always done. And this one's gonna bite you in the butt, I guarantee it. Yeah, it, it may, it may. So what else you got? Uh, the only other thing I got. So you had mentioned to me that one of our viewers likes to watch us at a faster speed. Yes. They like to listen to us, but they put us in a faster speed. Right, right. So just for shits and giggles, I watched a couple of our Geek Speaks, and I just hit the button and doubled it. We are still very legible, and I guess we speak slow enough to where it still makes sense because I watched other people's videos that yeah. I'm interested in, yeah. and I couldn't make out shit what they were saying because they were like, <laughs> but when you and I talk, yeah. it's just like a couple of squirrels arguing, but it's legible. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we're from Kentucky. We, we talk a little slow. We do everything slow. We eat slow. We right. eat, yeah, do everything slow. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, so I got the chance to meet, of course, I'm a big Blade Runner fan, and I got a chance to meet at a Comic-Con. I, I mean, Teresa had gone to a couple Comic-Cons in the last three weeks to meet James uh, Edward Almos. Right. And he's mainly known for Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica. Right, right. And, of course, he was in Mammy Vice. That's where I first saw him at. Well, I guess I first saw him in Blade Runner. Right. And so a lot of those Blade Runner actors are up in their 70s, and a lot of them aren't with us anymore. So it was a pleasure to meet him. And he was such a gentleman, and he took the time to talk to each person, and, and he thanked us for being his fan and saying that he wouldn't, able, he wouldn't be able to have done what he'd done for a living if it hadn't been for people like me and you. Right, right. And he was just real humble and real, real well-spoken. I think he's 77 now. And uh, not only did he sign the poster, but he... He wrote on there, he says, it's a shame she won't live. Oh. And he put dot, 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 but then again, who does? Which was a line from the movie. Right, right, he said. right. He wrote Gaff and, and wrote it on there. He was like, you remember that line from the movie? And I was like, sir, I remember every line from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I told him, I said, during COVID, me and my brother actually rented out a theater and uh, uh, to help them out financially and just for fun also and uh, played Blade Runner for... Uh, our friends and family, and for free, and uh, he was just, re he was really impressed by that, he was like, that is such, he said, that's so cool that yeah. you guys did that, you know, 
So, but anyway, he was a he. It was a nice experience. It was a nice That's experience. Cool. That's okay, awesome. Anything else? Nope. Comic book recommendation. So, way back in the seventies, there was a, in the eighties too. There was a Savage Sword of Conan comic. Okay. And uh, Roy Thomas had went to Stan Lee, and uh, uh, Roy Thomas had went to Stan Lee, and he said, "What if we have a comic that's not really a comic? We'll make it black and white. We'll make it magazine size, and we won't try to get the Comics Code Authority to approve it." And Stan was reluctant, but he went along with it, and so what came forward was Savage Sword of Conan. So it's larger than a regular comic. Uh, yeah, the artwork it's inside got of it's some girth to black it, yeah. and white. And uh, so Marvel recently lost the license to um, Conan, and so a company called Titan got it. So Titans started redoing Savage Swords of Conan. Ooh. This is the first issue, and it is fantastic. I mean, so are they just redoing the store, same no, stories? No, they're just... new stories, nice. new artwork, but it's black and white, same size, same painted covers. Uh, they had a. Uh, it wasn't just Conan. You had like other Robert E. Howard creations, and so there's a Solomon Kane story in the back. That art or reminds me of what was that cartoon? Was it Headlopper? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Headlopper. Comic book yeah, that? yeah, by Andrew McLean. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, but yeah, that's my comic book re recommendation. That thing was so f much fun to read. Not only was it good quality, uh, but you also uh, it, it was nostalgic too. It took me back to those old Savage Swords and. And we had a viewer, David Troy Campbell, who not, about a year ago or more, he sent he sent me a, a, an omnibus of a bunch of the classic Savage nice. Swords on Conan's because he knew I was a Conan fan. So, so uh, check it out if you get a chance. So, is it? You done? I'm done. All right. Well, I appreciate you watching. And if you like our content, please like and subscribe and stay geeky, my friends.